going to talk about a little bit uh, about focal therapy. It's kind of a whirlwind tour of, uh, you know, uh, what focal therapy is and, and, and some of the details around it. So uh, I have no disclosures. We're going to go a little bit through the background, rationale, some of the modalities, and then uh, we'll conclude. So um, there, there's been a lot of parallels made with breast cancer and prostate cancer, and it's kind of been kind of across the board, and this is no different. Um, this is, uh, you know, from the seminal trial comparing mastectomy versus lumpectomy, showing no difference, and just getting to that point um, was, a, was a whole challenge in and of itself. Um, and I encourage you to look at this book. It's called Breast Cancer Wars that describes the entire process getting to this point. So what is focal therapy? So in its purest form, it's essentially targeted ablation um, of the tumor, but can we really be that good? Um, so, so we'll discuss that. Uh, but focal therapy essentially has come to, to, to define anything that's a subtotal treatment of the prostate. So what's old is new. Um, this is from Hugh Hampton Young from 1937. He said, we have shown that in the early cases, a hemiprostatectomy may be sufficiently radical. So th this is not a new concept. So where were we? Um, back in the day, we were doing a significant amount of treatment uh, for patients. And so this is uh, from the PICO study, basically. Uh, patients who were, had Gleason of two to four had the mo the, were the majority of the patients being treated. Now, this is not Gleason pattern. This is Gleason total. Um, so significant over-treatment. We definitely have course corrected over the years. Um, this is from uh, Dr. Cooperberg and the Aqua study showing that active surveillance is uh, continuously being um, taken up uh, over the years. So there, certainly there's been an, uh, a course correction. So where does focal therapy uh, fit in? So potentially it's an intermediate approach where we can improve functional outcomes without sacrificing oncologic control um, by, uh, afforded by whole gland therapy. Um, and potentially there is a space there where we can um, fit in focal therapy. So what's the rationale um, for focal therapy and, and how do we uh, uh, do this successfully? So we'll talk about the index lesion concept, uh, advances in imaging and staging, uh, there's MRI, PSMA, um, some new AI technologies, um, and it's been successful in other organs such as breast cancer. So the advantages, uh, potentially cancer control versus cure, avoid and delay whole gland treatment for patients really interested in maintaining functional outcomes, there's less side effects, um, can be retreated and potentially can receive definitive therapy afterwards. Disadvantages, long-term outcomes are unknown as of yet. Um, ideal tumor patient selection can still be challenging. Uh, recurrence is really not well defined, specifically biochemical recurrence. Optimal salvage strategies are unclear um, and cost is, uh, remains to be worked out. So prostate cancer is inherently a multifocal disease. Um, however, there's a, there's a significant proportion of patients um, who have unifocal disease. So looking at the index lesion, so what is uh, it's defined generally as the largest, highest grade tumor um, with, uh, with extra prostatic extension. And most of the time, the grade and stage is determined by the index lesion as shown by the study where the vast majority of patients, for example, in PT2, um, the highest grade and biggest tumor um, uh, was the most important, uh, similarly with, uh, with higher stage disease. Um, what's uh, it, it, similarly um, this this study basically kind of was as a review looking at the index lesion where um, they showed that the index lesion itself showed hallmarks of um, of cancer whereas the low grades low volume secondary lesions did not um, can we reliably identify the index lesion um, so MRI has been uh, has been very powerful in in this space. Uh, it prefer preferentially detects high-grade lesions, um, specifically for grade group two, um, and there's good concordance, improved detection of the anterior zone, and extra prostatic extension. But there are limitations. This study we did with Dr. Ryder, um, basically showing that there are some limitations where MRI can miss about 10 to 25 percent of non-index uh, non lesions and can underestimate uh, volume as well. And it's obviously heavily dependent on expertise. And so as you can see, um, there is you know, some grade group eight and above that were missed and a, so large tumors that were missed as well. Um, can PSMA help? Uh, so this is a study where they looked at 138 patients who underwent prostatectomy who are potentially eligible for focal therapy. Um, and on final pathology, they showed that 33% um, of those patients were not su suitable for, for, uh, for hemiablation. 
Um, when you add, um, uh, specific, uh, sorry, when you add PSMA to it, um, you decrease um, the poor selection by about 50, 57%, and it only had about 3% false positive rate, and this is an example where there's discordance. As you can see on the PSMA showed uh, contralateral lesion that was not picked up by MRI. Um, so this leaves us with uh, this, this criteria for patient selection, uh, PSA of less than 10, um, grade group 3 and, um, and lower, unilateral single tumor, you can have contralateral grade group 1, um, MRI visible lesion and targeted biopsy uh, plus a 12 core biopsy. And this is based on the UC squared consensus, which um, I thought uh, you know, kind of articulated this the best, and I encourage you to uh, look at this in more detail. Um, what are the foundations of a good uh, focal therapy program? Uh, really, uh, radiology is a, part of, a big part of it. Optimized imaging, expert radiologist, um, and of course, urology, the ability to do fusion biopsy. Um, picking the right modalities, certain uh, modalities are a little bit more um, uh, flexible and versatile than others. Um, you know, one question is, do you choose one and you really run with it, or you choose a couple? Um, there are some nuances to choose one over the other, um, so generally about a couple would, would, would really um, help in the armamentarium. And of course, closing the loop, having a focal therapy working group where a case and imaging review and constant um, quality improvement. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of the focal therapy modalities, but just to kind of um, introduce the subject and, uh, and give some data. Um, so these are the modalities that are, that are very most common, cryo, HIFU, uh, focal laser ablation, IRE, which is uh, electrical energy, um, and uh, photodynamic therapy. Um, this is just a little bit of a summary of the HIFU data, um, and to summarize it here, about 65 to 95% uh, absence of clinically significant cancer on the follow-up biopsy one year um, in, the, in the treated region, um, very good continence rate, very good potency rates, um, and salvage treatment, low, uh, it was generally low at one to two years. This is an important study, which is a phase two study, a single arm, uh, looked at unilateral uh, MRI visible lesions, and this is an inbore HIFU uh, treatment, and the primary outcome was grade group two free rate at 24 months. Um, and it, they basically showed that um, they, the treatment uh, actually worked very well with 88% uh, negative biopsy in the targeted area. However, in the whole gland, um, there were some cancers. And of course, importantly, um, there were some high grade recurrences in the whole gland, um, but it looked very well actually in the, in the treated area. Some cryotherapy outcomes, this is focal cryotherapy, um, and generally very similar. Uh, the biopsy rates are, are um, generally very high, especially um, in the in-field, and similarly um, with um, uh, uh, functional outcomes. Irreversible electroporation, so this is technically a non-thermal ablative technique, although there is a little bit of um, a, a thermal um, a component to it. It's pulses of direct current electricity induce it and produces ir irreversible pores that ruptures the cancer cells, leading to apoptosis. This is one of the bigger studies, the retrospective, 229 patients uh, from Australia um, uh, with uh, median age 68, PSA 5.9, um, and 20% contralateral grade group one, and some of the results, infield recurrence rate is generally uh, very low, 7%, um, and this is at the one year mark, um, and out of field disease, um, only about 16%, and uh, salvage treatment was generally um, uh, low at, at that point. Um, of course, again, quality of life outcomes were, um, were significantly uh, uh, high, uh, meaning that there was very low urinary score. Over the, over the follow-up period, there was a decrease in uh, sexual function, but uh, remained um, uh, relatively okay. And of course, bowel and, and others were all uh, okay. Uh, for the sake of being uh, provocative um, this, and promote some discussion, so this is a study that basically asks what are the biopsy positive rates in patients who underwent radiation and at the two-year mark, and surprisingly there is a you know, high percentage of positive biopsies, and this is a relatively contemporary treatment cohort um, you know, where you see that the weighted average of about 32% of patients had positive biopsy two years after radiation, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, so, word on follow-up, generally patients um, six months um, are followed every six months and then annually, you know, the imaging can be pretty tricky to interpret and there are some newer guidelines in terms of how to 
interpret and how to score some of these uh, um, uh, post-treatment findings. Uh, PSA is followed regularly, uh, and biopsies, obviously, our main outcome uh, and functional outcomes uh, review uh, very regularly. So in conclusion, if the index lesion driving biology uh, could be reliably identified, uh, oncologic control of the cancer could be achieved while maintaining quality of life. Um, evidence base is growing. There's acceptable short and potentially intermediate term outcomes. Of course, excellent functional outcomes. Patient selection is critical. Um, and we'll address this more in the next talk about clinical trials um, that are ongoing. Thank you.